Hey guys, welcome back to EMT Made Easy. I am going to cover poisoning today. So poison, short video on poison. So this is the text that I got um, or the definition for poisoning from the book that I read today. Uh, a substance that gets into the body causing a serious emergency. So in other words, what that means to bring it down to an easier way to understand it's anything that goes into the body that makes you feel sick or ill. So if you're throwing up, you don't feel good, you got a fever, that could be considered a poison. All right, so that's what that is. So how many ways can a poison get into your body? There are really only four ways, and I'm gonna write them down. I already wrote down uh, two of them. So one is ingestion. So you can swallow the poison. You can eat it, uh, drink it, a good example of that is, let's say somebody doesn't like you um, and they want you gone. They could put a poison in your food, like ricin, uh, it's a pretty bad poison, and then you can die from it or get really, really sick from it. Another one is just regular food poisoning, which a lot of us have actually had. Uh, you eat food that has been mishandled, not, not kept in the right temperature, wasn't stored properly, then you get sick, you vomit, get a headache, all that stuff. Another one is inhale, so you can inhale a poison. Uh, the only scenario that, that I can think of right now is this one. So let's say you got home late at 2 in the morning, you were out at a club or you were partying, and you got to your car and into your garage, you managed to turn off the garage with your little button, but you fell asleep with the car on. What can happen then is you can have a carbon monoxide poisoning, which is when um, the carbon monoxide that's made in your car, because it goes out through your exhaust, will displace O2 because the hemoglobin, so this is a red blood cell, you have the hemoglobin inside the red blood cell, right? Well, for some reason, just carbon monoxide by itself will displace O2 because it's just attra it's attracted to hemoglobin. It's a, there's a higher attraction to, from the hemoglobin to the carbon monoxide than from O2. So it'll just kind of take its place and it won't let O2 latch on to the hemoglobin so then it can't go to where it needs to go. You can't make it to pee, people die. So that's one way. Carbon monoxide by inhalation. Another one could be injection. So. So one way that this could happen is it could be from drug use. It's more of an overdose. Um, it could be from an animal, so venom. Venom is a good one. If you get bit by a snake, that's poisoning. Or if you're James Bond, you can have um, an enemy inject you with a poison. So enemy with poison just come up behind you and inject you, you do some cool stuff. All right, so that's three so far. The other one is gonna be, so like triple I, A, uh, absorbed. So it could be absorbed by the body, absorbed. This one, um, it, it's usually an irritant. I can't spell right, sorry. <laughs> irritant or a corrosive, corrosive, um, it's just going to absorb through the skin and cause damage on the way down. That's also considered a poison. So there you have it. Poisoned, anything that gets into your body that makes you sick or ill, if you want to remember that correctly, um, there are four different types of ways for poison to get into your body. So real quick, I think I still have enough time. I'm gonna go ahead and cover charcoal and dilution, which are two ways um, that you can get rid of a poison or minimize the effects of a poison. So just let me erase this. Go ahead and take a two minute break, a bit of coffee, get some water, uh, go to your Facebook account. It's gonna take me about a minute. I'm gonna pause it this way. All right, so um, first I'm gonna go over activated charcoal. So activated charcoal. And 
and then dilution I'll hit up in a little bit. Well, uh, there's not there's not much to the to these. Um, they're pretty straightforward. So activated charcoal is something that the patient would eat. Um, and now uh, there there is a grams per kilo, and you should look it up because it's it might change if you're watching this down the road. That might change, so I'm not gonna go ahead and say a number right now. But there is a certain gram per kilogram that you have to give, or per kilo that you have to give the patient. Generally, if you give it within one hour, within a one hour window, you should be good to go. It should absorb most poisons. You don't want to give it with an acidic because people sometimes throw up when they eat activated charcoal. If they throw up, the acidic uh, substance that went down is going to burn on the way down and it's going to burn on the way up. So that one's better off just being left alone. So more for like medications, foods, stuff like that, that's when you want to get activated charcoal. Give it within one hour. After one hour, um, there's a good chance that most of that poison has been absorbed by the body and you pre it's pretty much too late. Uh, I know some counties have um, a range of one to three hours. Uh, so just go back and check with your protocols. This might change. Things are always changing. But that's what happens with activated charcoal. Now, how does it actually work in the stomach? Well, what happens is that activated charcoal, we'll see that, that's activated charcoal right there. It has a bunch of crevices and cracks on the surface. And let's say that this is the poison right here. The poison will kind of will bond to the charcoal through those cracks kind of just get absorbed or get stuck if you want to think about it like that. So all the poison will get stuck in between these cracks everywhere throughout the entire uh, the substance of charcoal. Now this is in suspension in case anybody asks you. But that's the way this works. So it just absorbs and then you poop it out. The patient poops it out and that's how that works. Sometimes they throw it up but in those cases that's not really what you want but it does happen though. Dilution. So let's go over dilution. Dilution, um, this is something that doctors sometimes recommend or recommend uh, for the person that ingested a poison. So these are both for ingested poisonings. Um, if they ingested the poison, they might recommend to drink uh, quite a bit of water. They, they might give you like a certain number of cups or milk. And it kind of depends on the substance. So the purpose behind this is that uh, this is the, we'll see that, I've got a bigger stomach. So this is the stomach right here, that's the chest. Um, and then in your stomach, you have your normal acids, and then let's say you swallowed a fluid, a poisonous fluid, and it's right there. And the doctor says, hey, you have to drink a whole bunch of milk or water to dilute it. So the whole point behind this is that by you, Mixing this up and bringing this up, you're going to dilute or make it thinner and therefore it's weaker um, when it absorbs. So it doesn't, it doesn't affect you as much and that's the whole purpose behind dilution. It's the fact that you're just making it thinner, you're spreading it out um, and hopefully it's weaker when it gets absorbed. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's what I'm going to cover for this chapter. There's a whole bunch of other stuff but I'm going to make some videos down the road. I know it's helping out quite a few people. So I'm going to keep doing it. Um, down the road, there might be a link below to go to a different site for some videos that I'm going to make um, that are much better than these. I kind of used to wing these and just kind of do them on the, on the fly. Uh, but people are, are asking for them, so I'm doing it. Besides that, peace. I have to go watch some Walking Dead. <laughs>